All right. So we wanted to talk today uh, about, you know, uh, big trend programmatic, and we couldn't have uh, had a better partner to, to chat with uh, about programmatic than Critio. The power of Critio is known to virtually everyone in e-commerce. Um, but we wanted to get a little more into details because always talking to people who are um, mm. saying, I used Critio in the past, not sure what it's doing today. And the innovations, the power of it today are phenomenal. So hopefully we can get uh, you guys pretty excited about adding this to the marketing mix. My name is Nick Rajpal. The VP of Marketing Sciences. I've been here for 15 years at Exclusive. I'm also the host of our webinar series. And we do a webinar every two weeks covering a different topic. Um, I joined in 2008 to develop our solutions. And today I head off our strategy team. I'm joined by Laura. Thanks, Nick. Um, hello and welcome, everyone. My name is Laura Hovanisian. I'm paid marketing manager at Exclusive. I've been with the company for over four years working with clients across various industries. Uh, most recently, I collaborated with several team members at Exclusive on the formation and rollout of our partnership with Credio. Uh, turning to Credio Commerce Group has been instrumental in helping many of our clients sustain business growth. So I'm very excited to bring all the great knowledge with Danielle and Nick to you today. Uh, and I'll pass it back to Nick. Awesome. Um, we won't do much of an introduction. Um, here's a handful of our clients, uh, just to give you a sense of uh, how we operate. We do work with partners, channels like Critio. Um, roughly, it takes about 15 different channels currently for us to be everywhere where our clients' um, customers are. So we coordinate across these 15 channels, but through technology and strategy, we can treat all of it as one platform and our technology helps us accomplish that with meta layers that are strategic, um, marketing efficiency ratio calculations, CLV, media mix models, et cetera. But uh, since 1997, first and foremost, we've been a performance agency. Daniel, can you talk a little bit about uh, the premium partnership, please? Yeah, so Critio has a premium partner program for our agencies, which involves um, Critio training and certifications on a variety of in-depth topics for our agency partners. And Exclusive Concepts was one of our first premier uh, partners that was onboarded onto this program. Awesome, I'm proud to be part of that. Um, folks, if, if you're not certain what programmatic is, it's it's not really very complex. It is a lot like all the other platforms you use. It just happens to have, um, there's there's these networks you might not be tapped into. It's an easy way to uh, essentially buy advertising space and it's all done um, in real time when a visitor loads, but it can span a lot, including CTV, which is pretty exciting. And what we've seen over the past few years is um, programmatic went from uh, kind of sounding like something that only very large advertisers uh, could get into or people that were transitioning from that uh, traditional TV and radio. But it's now being picked up by people who have other media mixes or were always in Google Ads, et cetera. So we've seen uh, a pretty high adoption of programmatic going on in the last few years. And um, clients are very happy with performance, which is why uh, we've continued to embrace it. All right, um, so it's nice to meet you all. My name is Danielle D'Andrea, and I lead Critio's account strategy team for our independent and performance agencies that are running commerce growth. So I've been with Critio for seven years and in performance advertising for over 10. And so my team works with over 100 agencies across 300 um, advertisers. Um, as which um, we just mentioned, Exclusive Concepts is a premier partner, and I'm a senior lead um, on our, our relationship, and the whole Exclusive team um, is just awesome. So diving right in, um, so the Critio headline or boilerplate is that Critio is a global technology company that enables marketers to drive commerce outcomes through personalized programmatic advertising from our commerce media platform. And we have two main sides of the business, commerce growth, which we'll be covering today, and then our retail media business. 
So the commerce growth side of the business caters to direct to consumer advertisers and those that have an in-store presence. So most common verticals include retail, travel, auto, lead gen, and finance verticals. And when you hear Critio, you may initially think of retargeting. We've grown over the years to become a full funnel display solution covering customer acquisition and retention uh, tactics. So in terms of advertisers we work with, um, you know, we have some of the largest out there like the Macy's and the Nikes of the world, as well as some of the best emerging uh, direct-to-consumer brands as well. And then the retail media side of the business is rapidly growing as more dollars are shifting towards e-commerce there. So this team partners with both brands and retailers, including over 200 major um, retailers there. Um, so Crudy was really helping them to reach um, relevant shoppers through sponsored ad listings on retailer websites. And then this also allows retailers um, to capture more revenue by monetizing their website inventory. So diving more into Crudio and Crudio's data, um, Crudio understands intent and identity at scale. So we work with over 22,000 advertisers, all of which help to power our first party media network. So we're able to see in real time what users are browsing and buying down to the individual SKU level, which totals to be over 900 billion in commerce sales annually. So to put that into perspective, it's about two and a half times the amount of Amazon's annual transactions. And so this data allows us to build unique proprietary audiences based on shopping behaviors and product information. So when comparing our audience data to search and meta, Facebook and meta uses likes or interest-based data. Google is leveraging search activity or whatever they're typing in um, search bar. And Critio's audiences are built using shopper insights. So when thinking about Critio in the market relative to search or social platforms, we like to say Critio knows how people buy. So what is the open internet? Uh, every publisher, retailer, brand website that isn't behind a walled garden is part of the open internet. So the average user spends about 66% of their time on the open internet. So Critio can provide incremental reach of high value users across the open internet beyond the walled gardens. So when thinking about how much marketers are spending on the walled gardens, they're spending well over half their budgets there. When in reality, users are actually spending more of their time browsing on the open internet. But that's not where the ad dollars are going. So what this data suggests is that most marketers are likely overinvested in the walled gardens. Consumers are also turning to the web to discover new brands uh, about 84% of the time. So there really is a big opportunity for marketers to tap into the reach of the open internet with Critio. So as I just mentioned, Critio is the experts on how people and users are buying. So this commerce data compared with um, the open internet reach can help you to achieve scale and new revenue tapping into Critio's unique audience targeting as well as open inventory. So diving more specifically into commerce growth. As I mentioned, this is where Critio's full funnel um, solution sits, and that which can be leveraged to hit a variety of, of KPIs you may have. Critio's key differentiators are its commerce data set, which I just highlighted, and then it's our direct supply, AI engine, and commerce expertise. So I'll dive um, more deep into these now. Um, so in terms of our supply, we have immense scale. Walled gardens are limited to targeting within the walls of their inventory, whereas Critio is plugged into many of the walled gardens, as well as inventory across the open internet. Not only are we plugged into all the major RTBs and exchanges like Google and 70 supply side platforms globally, we also have direct partnerships with over 4,000 premium publishers where we have first look access. And this also extends into native and video inventory sources as well. So through Crudio's direct publisher partnerships, this allows advertisers to take advantage of stronger win rates and higher quality inventory, driving more efficient results for marketers. And then in terms of user targeting, Crudio takes an inventory agnostic approach and is really focused on targeting the right users above all else ensuring we can reach them virtually wherever they go on the internet. 
So the scale of our inventory is a big advantage in terms of outcomes we can drive for marketers. So speaking more to what's powering Critio's AI engine, Critio has been long known as a performance driver, deeply connected to AI technology. And you know, every company out there is really talking about AI, how to grow it, how to expand it. Um, you know, in Critio and, and AI, it's always been part of Critio's DNA and dates back to 2005 when Critio was founded. And AI has really only grown and expanded over the years. We have a full team of AI experts at our headquarters in Paris, ensuring we have the best in class engine. So the Critio engine, and to dive more deeply into the specifics, is evaluating many different inputs and optimizing on a user by user basis to ensure we're delivering the right ad to the right user at the right time. And on top of that, fitting appropriately, giving an advertiser's KPI or goal. The engine is constantly evaluating over 120 different user intent signals across 10 billion products. These signals include variables such as a user's on-site engagement, device type, publisher insights, time of day, et cetera. And then this is paired with our optimization models, um, where each campaign is set up on an optimizer that is aligned with the KPI for their campaigns, such as conversions, leads, revenue, site visits, et cetera. And then you can either leverage automated bidding to maximize your results, or manual CPC or CPM targets. And then these inputs contribute to four main engine outputs. Um, audience targeting, which I mentioned, and then leveraging predictive bidding to sign each user a score based on the predicted outcome and how much the engine thinks a user is worth toward each campaign. Product recommendation, probably one of my favorite topics. Critio has a robust product recommendation engine and includes three types of recommendations within our dynamic banners. This includes historical or previously viewed products, um, as well as best of products, so top viewed, clicked, and purchased products, as well as recommended products. And a key driver of Critio's performance is that users are frequently discovering new products that they weren't originally exposed to on site within our banners for the first time. The engine is really leveraging the on-site conversion data we have for each advertiser to inform these recommendations and is really adding value there. And then finally, dynamic creative um, optimization. Adjust the creative on the fly on a, by a user by user basis based on the individual's shopping preferences. So rotating in and out a variety of brand on brand CTAs, color sets, formats, and more to drive click through rates and conversion rates. So whether you have a new customer acquisition goal, return on ad spend goal, everything the engine is doing helps to fuel performance and the outcomes you're looking to drive. So in summary, Critio is doing all of this automation work behind the scenes for you from creative optimization to who we're showing an ad to, where we're serving an ad, in order to make each and every one of your dollars go as far as it can. And then so all of this data comes together to help drive business outcomes throughout the sales funnel to help you acquire new customers and retain your best ones. So within our commerce growth platform, you can build targeted segments to fuel growth across the customer journey. Critio has solutions that aligns to KPIs throughout the sales funnel. Outlined here, you can see the different goals we can help to support across recommended channels and creative types. So for awareness-based goals, such as cost per completed view, viewability, we can target audiences that serve across OTT, CTV, and online video inventory. Traffic acquisition or new customer acquisition campaigns with a return on ad spend or a cost per acquisition goal tend to leverage display banner creative. There's a bend blend between branded static plus some dynamic elements or an OLV format. And then for conversion and retention campaigns with a ROAS goal, these campaigns tend to perform best using dynamic creative ads we can build from an advertiser's product feed. So we'll go deeper into audience targeting capabilities and how this can help you achieve your growth goals later on um, in the presentation. Perfect. 
All right, I can take over here. So in this section of today's webinar, we will explore key factors that businesses and marketers need to take into account when deciding between Google Display and Creative Commerce Growth. So let's dive right into it. All right, so determining the optimal channel mix for your advertising strategy is a critical decision that can significantly impact your campaign success. Uh, at Exclusive, we carefully analyze the unique strengths and capabilities of each platform and how those align with our clients' goals to drive the best possible results. Uh, so if you uh, if your display ads on Google are consistently getting disapproved, you may want to consider using Creative Commerce Group. We have found that certain industries such as uh, swimwear, massagers, maternity clothing, just to list a few, are consistently restricted by Google due to their content. However, Creo tends to be less strict with ad approvals for those industries, opening up opportunities for programmatic ads. Uh, another reason to uh, look into Creo could be you're looking for more creative options. Uh, Creo Commerce Growth offers a great range of ad formats for both for marketing and prospecting. Uh, particularly with dynamic ads, Creo Commerce Growth provides excellent customization options, including the ability to create branded dynamic ads that combine brand assets, images with product sets. Um, if you do have established if great success uh, with Google Display uh, and want to keep your advertising efforts streamlined to one platform and you have a limited budget that doesn't allow testing for other platforms, it only makes sense to continue running your ads on uh, Google. However, uh, if you are seeing um, decline in display performance after launching Performance Max campaigns on Google, which can cannibalize um, display campaigns and claim credit for the sales, we recommend um, supplementing your display marketing efforts with Creo Commerce Growth, or at least test Creo to retain control over your budget, visibility, and messaging goals for this display. Um, and if you want to maximize your reach for both for marketing and prospecting, using both Google Display Network and Creo Commerce Growth may be the best option here. Uh, this allows you to reach a wider audience and take advantage of unique strengths of each platform. Uh, speaking of strengths, the next two slides will highlight ways Credio um, differs from Google um, Display. So the first one, wider industry access, right? I mentioned how Credio generally has less strict advertising guidelines compared to Google. So certain industries or types of content that may face stricter limitations on Google Display Network can often find more leeway and opportunities for advertising on Credio Commerce Growth. This gives us the opportunity to explore a wider range of creative options and messaging strategies that can lead to more engaging and impactful um, ad campaigns, as well as expanded opportunities for uh, restricted industries, opening up avenues for uh, business to reach their target audience effectively. Uh, target price point. When we think about targeting shoppers based on specific product categories that they're actively shopping for, with Credio Commerce Growth, we can refine targeting by selecting product price ranges, uh, which essentially allows us to reach people who've shown interest in products within a specific price range, low, medium, or high. Now, this allows for more precise targeting, uh, increasing the chances of engagement and conversion and avoiding unnecessary spending on audiences that may not be interested or aligned with your offerings. Uh, similar audiences, so these are created based on the traits and behaviors of existing customers who have already shown an affinity towards a brand. Uh, this means that the targeted individuals within the similar audience are more likely to have a higher engagement and conversion rate. Many of you might already know that Google is sunsetting its similar audiences in August. Um, the good news is that Credio has this has its version of similar audiences named lookalike audiences that we can continue utilizing those segments um, to reach new potential customers. Uh, if we go to the next slide here. Um, Target competitor brands. Uh, so with Credio Commerce Group, we can reach shoppers who are in market for specific brands. Uh, by presenting your offerings as an alternative or superior option, we have the opportunity to win over customers from your competitors. This often opens up new avenues for growth and customer acquisition for clients at exclusive. Um, coupon future 
uh, Creative Commons Group has this unique feature that allows us to overlay promo code over an existing ad to highlight a promotion. These are called coupon ads. So by overlaying a promo code over an existing ad, coupon ads can attract more attention from viewers and generate higher click-through rate and conversion rate. Um, last but not least, uh, when compared to dynamic ads on Google, Creative Commerce Group offers great customization options to dynamic ads. To name a few, we can edit logo size, position, text font, background, and text colors. Um, one notable feature is the ability to create branded dynamic ads that seamlessly integrate brand assets with product sets. Uh, we actually have an example for you on the next slide. So on the left, we have um, an example of a dynamic ad from Google. You can see it's just product uh, sets. Sometimes they will decide to show the product price or title or no. There's no way of us deciding to um, have any sort of consistency there in terms of displaying or not displaying product price or titles. However, on the right side, we have an example from Credio. This is the branded dynamic ad. At the very top of the ad, you can have the branded image or video um, that is fully customizable. And then right uh, below or right next to it, depending on the size variant, you'll have the product sets that uh, Creos AI will pull from the product feed, and those are highly customized and personalized to the user who is receiving the ad based on their um, interest and, and behavior on your site. So speaking a little bit more to Creos Creative, <clears throat> we can drive consumers from awareness to conversion using a sequential um, creative messaging approach and leveraging a variety of ad formats throughout the user journey. So we can incorporate your brand assets, as Laura mentioned, and videos. And also for our conversion-based dynamic creative, Credio can actually build these ads for you by leveraging um, an advertiser's product feed or, or data feed and pulling in um, those elements. Um, we also have a full team of in-house creative consultants that can help incorporate your brand guidelines to ensure the look and feel of your ads are consistent um, with your brand and website. And all of the creative and DCO from Credio is included already within our CPC and our CPM pricing models. So there's no additional fees um, or costs associated with creative um, or anything else for that matter. Excellent. Yeah, we have two case studies for you. Um, the first case study we have is for an apparent apparel client who had declining year over year display performance on Google. With ad spend being flat year over year, they had significant drops in revenue and return on ad spend by 53%. So finding opportunities to scale up display was becoming a challenge due to the introduction of Performance Max. Uh, so to, do, to address the challenge, we decided to explore a new solution and turned to Credio Commerce Growth, launching campaigns targeting users who have previously engaged with the brand, as well as similar audiences to drive awareness and consideration. Um, our efforts paid off, yielding great results. We drove over 100% increase in revenue while maintaining the same ROAS as Google Display. And these numbers are coming from Google Analytics um, last click attribution um, so this demonstrates the effectiveness of Credio Commerce growth campaigns in driving sales growth and maintaining efficiency. Uh, the second case study we have is for Indigo Wild, uh, another client of us, us that sells home cleaning and bath and body uh, products. Uh, we had a declining year over year display or marketing performance for Indigo Wild on Google after launching Performance Max campaigns. Um, and to address this challenge, again, we decided to explore a new solution and we turned to Credio Commerce Growth. Uh, we believe that with Credio, we can help drive retention and achieve efficiency growth uh, in our advertising efforts. Um, and again, excellent results here. We saw remarkable 500% growth in sales compared to the previous year. Additionally, our return on spend skyrocketed by 700% compared to last year. So integrating Credio Commerce Group into advertising strategy has been effective uh, and impactful for Indigo Wild. Um, so if you haven't used Credio before, here's a quick primer. Um, Credio's commerce growth platform really gives you control, flexibility, and robust reporting insights for your marketing campaigns 
all in one interface. So it's very easy to go live with Critio and manage your campaigns. Um, so within the platform, you can create, launch, and optimize your campaigns in just seconds with bid, budget, and goal optimization levers. You can build hyper-focused audience segments and reach the right people with both automated and customizable targeting strategies. And then in terms of creative, you can build and launch a variety of different ad formats and you can leverage your own brand assets um, and or create the dynamic banners um, that I just mentioned um, from your product or catalog feed. And then you can also measure your campaigns through our real-time reporting, forecasting, and experimentation tools to identify growth opportunities, as well as review um, you know, a number of deeper insights, um, such as creative performance, product SKU level insights, publisher reporting, and much more. And there's always new features that are being added into the platform. So some of the most recent uh, really cool options include A-B testing, uh, brand lift measurement, and then also the ability to Daniel, you froze. So we'll just give it a second. Daniel was on her last point about uh, optimizing across measurable inventory. So we'll uh, we'll get her back when when. Uh, she unfreezes. Um, what we want to talk about now is okay. So clearly, there's uh, a technology that has been in e-commerce for a long time. It has access to a larger swath of potential customers, and yet there's less advertisers clamoring for those customers. That's a great point. But that's already a good reason to get in here, especially when saturated marketing platforms are increasing in cost per click and cost per acquisition you need to find ways to diversify hey danielle uh just we uh went ahead and uh started the next slide do you have a last point that you wanted to cover real quick on on your last slide oh, should we be testing her uh her audio again but so we've we've talked about that you know it's a uh, available inventory great way to diversify, meant for e-commerce, great signals. Um, we've also shown you that there's reasons to use this versus Google Ads, and that it's working for our clients in situations where we really need help. What we see Critio as is part of this growing digital footprint. And it's getting more difficult for uh, businesses to be everywhere and it's really frustrating to see your competitors everywhere mm -hmm. so what we've been able to do is shift into the future using a whole new framework we basically said when we're evaluating Critio or any other channel we need that to be part of a holistic marketing strategy and luckily we've identified that it doesn't matter how far back in the past or how far in the future you go, every marketer and every marketing platform all thinks about the same thing. Marketing must do five desired outcomes. Find cold audiences that are perfect and build awareness. Find people who are in market and show up, that's consideration. Take someone who's been to your website and stick with them until they buy, that's conversion. Get a past customer to buy again, that's loyalty get past customers to like, share, review, and that's advocacy. And luckily, each one of these things supports the next, and it starts to spin this beautiful virtuous activity cycle. But you can do awareness targeting across every single channel. You have an awareness strategy, you can apply it to Google, to Meta, TikTok, Critio, Amazon, everything. This is the way we wanna think about things and make it easy for you to say, well, I already have this beautiful holistic strategy. Let's throw Critio in there as well. So we're going to spend the rest of this presentation talking about that lens. Now, luckily, we've built the reporting, the execution processes, and the planning strategy to be able to do this. It's really nice to be able to see in real time all your awareness across every channel. 
and what the investment is and what the return is. But there's there's a lot more to this. We've identified that in this type of framework, which is a global framework across all marketing, you need to know how to navigate it. You need methodologies to guide you. The most critical methodology we've discovered thus far is, am I supposed to spend a lot on awareness? Or am I supposed to spend a lot on people who are searching for my category? We've actually been able to bifurcate the entire e-commerce world into these two different groups. A brand-based journey is like Nike, which you've already seen some examples of Nike. If Nike can get into the mind share of everyone who buys sneakers, then when they are searching to buy sneakers, that's top of mind. There aren't a lot of markets like that, where you go in to buy a product in that category, you already know a few brands, cars, insurance, shoes. But the internet also has a lot of options where you say, I have a category of products I want to buy. I'm going to go to Google and see what selection exists. I like one brand, but I'm open to other brands. And that is more focused on consideration. What we're going to do right now is try to walk you through, let's say you're a brand-based journey and awareness is important to you, what can you use Criteo for? If consideration is more important to you because everyone starts at that consideration level, they don't know brands, they're open to anything, you got to show up, you got to convince them, then what can you do on the consideration side? We're going to walk through conversion, loyalty, and advocacy as well. So. Let's start off with uh, with awareness here. So with awareness, we're going to cover a few different things that Criteo has done really well. <clears throat> One, they've identified ways to kind of find customers who are buying in season or behaviorally correct. We can cover awareness building avenues like CTV. You know. Other technologies say if someone has a high household income, target them with the premium product. It's not exactly how it always works. Medium income can buy high products. High income can be more frugal. So you can target price point here. There's predictive marketing and location-based. Let's we'll start off really quickly with, with a few things. So behavioral is trying to find people who are or use settings within Criteo to essentially hone in on who is most likely to be in your market at any given time. So instead of doing mass marketing for awareness, you're doing much more concentrated around people who are likely to buy. If you have coastal buyers or southern buyers or metro buyers or you have locations and brick and mortar, location can be really helpful. Season is one, seasonal is one that we're going to cover in more depth because uh, Criteo has done a great job with figuring out seasonal. I will talk a little bit about predictive as well, which is um, from the last few years, one of the most important innovations on programmatic to be able to figure out who is most likely going to be buying in your segment. So when Planning for the year, incorporating seasonality um, is really important. Um, so Credio can create seasonal audience targeting shoppers who have a history of purchasing and browsing during certain occasions. And so targetings for these audiences can really be geared either toward a new customer acquisition or a retention goal. So for example, we have Memorial Day coming up as well as Father's Day. So these audiences that we have can help you to re-engage users who've purchased um, during Memorial Day sales and Father's Day last year. And then through our creative, we can get back in front of them. Um, and then also you know, get those promos um, that you're having in the sales in our creative out in front of them now to really encourage them to click and visit your site during these key seasonal um, moments. And in terms of CTV, we take an audience first approach. Um, with Criteo, um, you can activate any of your audiences or Criteo's audiences on OLV, OTT, and connected TV inventory. And when you think of CTV, you might think of an awareness play. However, with Criteo, we always want to be driving a measurable outcome. 
Something that's unique about our offering is that we can track the impact your CTV campaigns have down the funnel and on your e-commerce website and bottom line through our full funnel reporting. So the first step is targeting the right audience with your video ad using perhaps sort of the audiences we'll, we'll walk through today. Um, from there, we tend to see a lot of success through launching a display campaign targeting users that were exposed to your CTV ads to push them further down the funnel. So as CTV is not clickable inventory, we can set up a sequential display campaign to target users that have been exposed to a CTV ad. We then target them on the web where they can click and visit your site. And now that they're a site visitor and more familiar with your brand, we can continue to target them with consideration-based creative. And so one of the most frequently asked questions um, that we get is how do we measure the impact of our full funnel campaigns? Um, so here is an example on the next slide of a full funnel report. So we're so excited to have access to full funnel reporting. Um, and this tends to be one of our most popular reports used by um, our agencies and our, our advertisers. Awesome. So uh, with Creative Commerce Growth, um, we can refine targeting by selecting product price ranges, something that I mentioned um, already, but um, which essentially allows us to reach people who have shown interest in products within a specific price range, low, medium, or high. Um, this really helps to create a stronger connection between the ad and the shopper's need needs and preferences, increasing the chances of engagement and conversion. So by focusing on shoppers who are more likely to be interested in products within a specific price range, businesses can allocate their resources more effectively, avoiding unnecessary spending on audiences that may not be interested or aligned with their offerings. Yeah, this is definitely even more impactful for premium uh, products that have a difficult time finding those premium buyers. Uh, so consideration is a little different from awareness, right? Awareness is, I know who will buy my product eventually, even if they're not showing signs that they want to buy it immediately. Consideration is, there's some signs here that this person is in the market to buy a product. So there is a market targeting. If they're looking at one of your competitor brands, that's a great reason to believe that they are actively buying. Uh, similar audiences, which again is uh, sunsetting in Google in August. And then native. So someone's reading an article about um, about your market or your concept, and you show up natively within that particular article. So in market itself is uh, is basically organized through Critio's uh, targeting that if you're in a particular market and they believe customers are in that market, you have the ability to go ahead and start it. Um, Native ads, once again, is when you're reading an article in um, a publisher's site and you see little ads that are pretty relevant and oriented to the topic uh, that they're reading about, and it takes you to another page. It kind of looks like you're still part of the website, but you're going to another website. So very contextual and very relevant. And again, look alike is based on the quality of the list that you upload. And then you can start to orient that back to um, help Critio find more people that are similar to you. Yeah, I'll go into a little more detail in terms of lookalike and in-market audiences. Um, as Nick already mentioned, lookalike audiences find people who resemble those in your existing remarketing audiences. Um, in other words, it identifies new potential customers that are similar in browsing and purchasing characteristics to your recent site visitors or customers. So what we recommend doing here is to create high value customer segments, such as frequent shoppers, um, loyalty club me members, specific product or product category shoppers, allowing Credio's predictive AI to build look like audiences both of those high value segments. There's a lot of room for testing and learning to make the most of look like audiences when driving consideration. Uh, in terms of in-market audiences, uh, this is a great audience type to drive consideration. 
These audiences include engaged shoppers based on specific brands and product categories that they're actively shopping for. Uh, we can build in-market segments using combination of different targeting options like interests, brands, demographics, um, and of course, not forgetting about the product price filter uh, feature. So to give you an example of here, here, right, if we were to try and get super hyper-focused uh, with targeting, trying to reach uh, men who are interested, uh, who are looking to buy red luxury Nike shoe, we can choose two shoes from the product category group um, to target. In addition to that, we can um, define Nike from the brand uh, interest group, adding price range for high price products and gender for men, and we have our audience uh, ready, ready for targeting. So that's how granular and hyper-focused you can actually get with your in-market audiences as opposed to just targeting uh, shoes or people who are interested in buying any product from Nike. Awesome. And uh, as Conversion Sounds is, is a concentrated effort on past visitors or people who've had an event before they've made their first purchase. So past visitors, you can do past customers and based on events. And uh, luckily, Critio can do quite a bit here. But we may we may have just a an issue with Danielle's um, uh, connection right now. Uh, Laura, would you mind uh, trying to step in on yeah. Danielle's slides? Thank you. Yeah, definitely happy to help. Um, so with events, uh, we can actually um, go beyond just our standard remarketing campaigns and target first party signals from shoppers. Uh, think about your, not only just your recent purchasers, but those recent purchasers can be uh, bucketed in different groups, one-time purchasers, uh, multi-time purchasers, uh, purchasers of certain products or product categories. So it is essential to have those lists ready to go and have them uploaded to Credio to drive consideration. Um, Let's see. Speaking of, I guess. Yeah. Oh, we lost Danielle. Um. Might get her back. But um, so let's talk about loyalty a little bit. So loyalty, just like with Meta and uh, and Google Ads, you can upload a customer list. Um, and there's, if, if we get Danielle back, we talk a little bit about the uh, the new exciting Clavio integration, but. Um, Let's just talk a little bit uh, about, you know, what kind of segmentation practices make it uh, more effective for you to to target those groups of your past customers. Yeah, absolutely. So with first party audience targeting, it is important to analyze your data and prioritize relevant attributes for in impactful results. Um, so we recommend grouping your audiences into segments based on identified attributes and goals. Uh, a few examples could be isolating and targeting one-time shoppers to drive repeat purchases or targeting your high-value lapsed customers to drive reactivation. Uh, we also recommend targeting those audiences in different campaigns or ad sets uh, for more personalized ad creative and better control over ad spend. Awesome. Um, Danielle, are you? Uh... I'm back now. It, my Perfect. computer is okay. not like doing a webinar for some reason. It kept logging me out. No um, worries. But... It's a popular bias against go to webinar. So let's go for it. But, uh, there's over 100,000 users of Clavio. So you guys have a new integration with them, right? Yes, which is very exciting. Um, so Critio, you know, really knows how important it is to activate first party data. Um, and when activating you know, your first party data lists, either with, with Clavio or, or another partner, you're really extending your reach of these users across the open internet. So if you're running these lists on social, another channel, um, you know, running these with Critio is just gonna help you get more reach of these valuable users. And in terms of partnerships, Critio is partnered uh, with all the major data pr providers um, of which um, Clavio as well, which is one of our, our newest and, and most popular ones as well. Um, so just like you're using Clavio for emails, you can target those same users with Critio um, and your ads across the open internet. 
And some of the most common use cases to activate first party data tend to be more retention focused and include targeting sub segments such as lapsed users customers um, and one-time buyers that you're trying to get to convert and to become um, a repeat customer, um, to name a few examples. Awesome. We just have a few more thoughts before we go to questions. Um, we're going to talk about just making sure that you get the highest performance possible from uh, from Critio. Um, one quick point on Critio itself, and then we're going to talk about just essentially how does it become part of your your entire holistic approach? Yes, so Creo's A-B testing functionality allows us to experiment with different campaign parameters and find the best strategy to achieve our business goals. But the experiment tool, uh, we can access, um, the experiment tool provides access to accurate and reliable data for evaluating performance of different campaign elements, allowing us to make data-driven decisions. Uh, we can measure key metrics uh, such as click -through rate, conversion rate, cost per acquisition to determine the impact of changes made the experiment made in the experiment group. And with the experiment tool, we can test changes on a smaller portion of our overall campaign traffic uh, while keeping the majority of the traffic in the control group. This minimizes the risk associated with implementing the um, untested changes across the entire campaign so we can evaluate the impact of potential optimizations without risking a significant loss in performance or budget. Amazing. Um, other questions, you know, um, as an agency that is embracing technologies like Critio, um, we're, we're constantly asked to like, how do, we, how do we figure out where it goes in the entire holistic approach? And how do we know that it's, it's working? Every, every channel has its own attribution formula for saying how much revenue they have. So how do we, how do we get past that? How do, we, how do we start to embrace more and more uh, places where customers are gonna be? So first answer is media mix modeling. Media mix modeling is, is the foundation of what if scenarios. Um, we pull in all the ad spend from every channel compared to revenue. And then from that, our multiple regression model can take um, historical revenue data and project future historical historical advertising cost of sale and project the next 12 months. It can tell us which channels are, are creating the highest impact on revenue. So we can do these hypothetical what if scenarios of the fundamentally the most important part of a media mix model. So now we can start to agnostically evaluate all channels and channel mix. And that's where Critio can really start to, to shine because it can show that it has a bigger impact. From there, we can understand seasonality coefficients and set those seasonal targets and also um, plan spend levels per month per channel and understand revenue that's going to be achieved from it. Also, it behooves us to start looking not at channel level ROAS anymore, which once again, Critio, Meta, TikTok, Google, Amazon, they all have their own formula for how they will compute what the revenue is that they generated. So instead we say, look at this as a global metric, all your marketing dollars in, all your marketing costs to your agency compared to your revenue. And this is called market efficiency ratio. How many points of your margin are going towards um, marketing? This is the global way for you to embrace more and to grow faster. So it's, it's something that if you're going to start expanding your marketing mix um, beyond the core like Google, you want to have some mechanism to be able to embrace more. If you're going to do more awareness targeting, um, it's important to understand your customer lifetime value. You don't get all that reporting from a platform like Critio alone. This has to be something that is pulling in data from everywhere. Um, our recommendation is to have a tool that is constantly bringing CLV calculations to your fingertips. Our tool calculates in real time what is the customer lifetime value in 12 months? How many net new customers are we acquiring? For each new monthly cohort, what is the uh, the customer lifetime value on day 0, 30, 60, 90? And then also, most important, customer lifetime value multiplied by margin. What is our active current cost, cost per acquisition break even? Using that number to drive awareness, 
but especially when you have full funnel reporting like Danielle showed, allows you to get significantly higher, factorially higher exposure while still being profitable. So before we take these questions, um, if you're considering expanding your channel mix, you want these low saturation, high performance channels like Critio to be part of your mix, but you want it to all be seamless, you want a fresh take on the new e-commerce uh, ecosystem and how you should be playing in it, we offer a free growth plan where we analyze all these questions for you, um, either myself or my, my colleague Liam um, would be conducting this entire process. It's a multiple step process, but again, it's free. Um, and if we determine after studying you and your competitors and search versus brand-based journey, we start to recommend what channels you should be invested in, then we may even go down and dive in deeper. Maybe SEO needs its own audit. You're spending more than 20,000 per month on, on Google or Critio or Meta or TikTok. We need to dive in there. All that will be handled on an as-needed basis. But the job here is to maximize your digital footprint in the simplest way while improving your efficiency and scale. So we'll keep that up while we look at some of these questions real quick. And uh, both of these questions are for you, Danielle. If for any reason uh, you need to defer on any of these questions, please let us know. So first comes from uh, Arpana. Hey, Arpana, how are you? Um, I'd like to know more about uh, how to use the coupon code in the Critio platform. Any comments there? Yeah, sure. Um, so the way you would use it, um, there, there's two main ways. And the best way to do it is essentially would be a, a static overlay that rotates in and out with the logo zone. And usually it's for site-wide offers. So if there's a 20% off friends and family sale, that's gonna rotate in and out with the logo zone. And the reason why we recommend to place it there is because you can still see the dynamic products um, which tend to drive really high kind of CTR and, and conversion rates when you can see see both um, and then implying this type of promotional creative it really helps to get the word out there about your promotion um, and really does help to improve performance um, as well the other option um, would be a full frame overlay that would be kind of a static image that goes over the entire banner and rotates in and out with it. Um, and we usually would recommend um, doing the logo zone as we don't really want to be covering up the dynamic products, but it is another option if you have branding assets that you really want to use and, and have out in, in market as well. Awesome. Laura, anything you wanted to add to the question about uh, the coupon code creative platform? Daniel covered it all. Okay, perfect. Um, and then the full funnel report, which uh, I love that. Does it include any touches outside of Critio ecosystem? So the Critio full funnel report is specific to your Critio campaigns um, itself. Yep. And uh, Jeff, we're um, bringing in the data from uh, as many sources as possible and then could, um, uh, kind of uh, navigating uh, attribution there is, is part of what we do for our clients uh, across those channels. So we should be able to help you quite a bit there, especially with the media mix modeling. Any other questions that um, come to mind, team, um, from from just viewing this? Was this helpful, um, a refresher on Critio and kind of how it might inter interact with some of the marketing that you already have established or uh, kind of take some of the successes you might have in like dynamic ads and you know, bolster it with much better looking ads. You feel confident that we covered the right things? Well, we'll take the question, we'll take that in the questions box uh, or in the survey as they come. Folks, thank you for taking uh, an hour out of your, your Wednesday with us today. Danielle, thank you so much for helping us prepare this presentation. And Laura, you as well. And I'm glad that we're seeing so much success here already. And you know, people need new ways to market and, and see success. So this is fantastic. Oh, we do have one more question real quick. How can we connect Clavio Mailing with Critio for Audience from Dennis? 
Um, yep, so we have a direct integration um, with them, so we can work with our, our technical teams internally to onboard those lists within in our platform, and then you can activate um, any ad sets against them. So you can reach out to the you know, exclusive team, Critio, account strategists, and help you out. Yep. And Clavio also has an integration uh, section that you, you'll be able to find that in. So, all right, wonderful. Thank you, folks. Happy Wednesday, everyone. We'll see you in two weeks. We've got another webinar coming up. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.